she was born into polygamy. Her family followed the teachings of Joseph Smith, including plural marriage. Like many young girls, she had been promised to a man who was her father's age. But she ran away. She chose hell over a life of polygamy. That girl was me. I was lost, alone, desolate. Then Jesus Christ found me and rescued me. In his love, I found real freedom. He is a shield to all who will take refuge in him. This is why I can look back and ask, polygamy, what love is this? Welcome to Polygamy, What Love Is This? I'm your host, Doris Hansen. You know, when we ask the question, what love is this? We're referencing the fact that God is love. And we wonder what kind of love is it that commands the contentious practice of polygamy where love is often shallow, fragmented and divided, even absent. Before we get started for today, we just want you to know that we do help people leave polygamy and we help them discover that God will never be angry with them for getting out and getting away. You can call our toll-free number uh, for more information. It's 877-425-9993 for a private and confidential discussion of your situation and how we can help. You can also go to our website, shieldandrefuge.org, for information about us. If you would like to contact us about any of our shows or to be a guest, you can email us at email at whatloveisthis.tv. Also, audio versions of our program are available to download. You can go to our main webpage for instructions, or you can go to soundcloud.com slash whatloveisthis. In addition to SoundCloud, our show is also available on iTunes podcast. And now I would like to thank again our co-host, <laughs> Earl Erskine. Thanks for having for me. For gracing again. our show and helping out with this thank information. You. Thank you. The information we want to get out I to know. people who are caught up in, in all of this. It yeah. is. You know, we've been doing a series on Joseph Smith's plural wives, and we do some research and then tell the condensed story of each wife. We're on wife number 18, and then we're going to jump to wife number 22 because wives number 19 and 20 are the Partridge sisters, and we want to tell their stories together, uh, which we'll do next time. So we'll begin with wife number 18, who was Flora Ann Woodworth Smith Gove. Mm -hmm. Joseph Smith married Flora Ann Woodworth when she was just 16 years old, which made her one of his youngest wives. Wow. And he would have been 37 years old at the time, which mm. of course that makes him more than Twice. double her age. Yeah. Actually, Joseph Smith married uh, many teenagers. He married three 19-year-old girls. He married three 17-year-old girls. 16-year-old Flora, and two 14-year-old girl, girls. Today we'd call him a pedophile. There's not a lot of documentation of his marriage to Flora Ann Woodworth, but there is enough information to verify and confirm historically that she was one of his plural wives without any doubt. Flora Ann Woodworth was born in November uh, in, in, in 1826 in New York, and then uh, later the Woodworth family joined the Mormons in Missouri about 1835. By 1843, Flora's father, Lucian, was serving as an architect and a construction foreman of the Nauvoo House, which was one of Joseph Smith's yes. pet projects. Yes. Um, so Flora's father must have enjoyed an important position in Joseph Smith's circle of friends and advisors. Uh, Joseph Smith, of course, was an opportunist, and he kept his eyes <laughs> on this developing young girl child of, of the father who was helping him. Even though their marriage is underdocumented, it is firmly established that it did take place probably on March 4th of 1843. So we want a quote from In Sacred Loneliness. Nauvoo Mormons used codes to record polygamous marriages. If Smith did marry Flora on March 4th, he married her on the same day that he married Emily Partridge, 
Flora was 16 at the time, one of the Mormon leader's youngest wives. That's from Todd Compton's In Sacred Loneliness. In Sacred Loneliness. It was commonly known that Flora was probably a favorite wife of Joseph Smith, and she was frequently referred to in William Clayton's journals. Mm -hmm. Now, In Sacred Loneliness, which was written by Todd Compton, is our primary source for the information that we use for this series. It mentions that Phoebe, Flora's mother, may also have been a plural wife of Joseph Smith. We also use Nauvoo Polygamy, written by historian George D. Smith, and he seems sure of the fact that Phoebe's mother was also a plural wife. And we want to quote from his book, uh, which uh, says this about that possible marriage. On October 29, the mother of Flora Woodworth was initiated into the Holy Order. This event was significant enough for Brigham Young to record it in his 1843 diary probably because under normal circumstances, only plural wives and consenting first wives were admitted to this secret society. Phoebe may have joined the inner circle of polygamists at an earlier time, perhaps in March 1843, with Flora in a mother-daughter marriage to Smith. In any case, Phoebe's presence among the select order of the anointed mm -hmm. lends credence to the idea that she had been wedded to Smith whether in March or October or some time in between. So the, the information that he has shows that Phoebe was indeed a plural wife of Joseph Smith along with her teenage daughter. Um, and that is also interested. We have to say this again. We've said it before, but we will say it again. A man who marries both a mother and her daughter is called wicked and cursed by God. We quote from the Bible. Yeah, Leviticus uh, chapter 18, verse 17. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. Do not have sexual relations with either her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter. They are, close, they are her close relatives. That is wickedness. And from Deuteronomy 27, 23, it says, Cursed is the man who sleeps with his mother-in-law. Okay, yeah, so, and, so and he had at least one other um, mother and daughter marriage, rela plural marriage relationship. Yeah. Uh, now, after Flora married Joseph Smith, a 19-year-old missionary returned from his mission and he proceeded to look around among the young ladies, available ladies, to someone that he might fancy, and he chose Flora. So one day he and Flora were walking together on the street and they happened to be near Joseph Smith's home and when he drove up beside them in his carriage and invited them to take a ride with him. Now, we don't know Flora's reaction to this event, but we do quote from the young man's own words what happened. <laughs> he opened the door for us and when we were seated opposite to him he told the driver to drive on. We went to the temple lot and many other places during the afternoon and then he drove to the Woodworth house. After we got to the house Sister Woodruth, Woodworth told me that Flora was one of Joseph's wives. I believe that Eliza R. Snow and the two Partridge girls were his wives but was not informed about Flora. But now Sister Woodworth gave me all the information necessary, so I knew Joseph believed and practiced polygamy. Now, as a matter of course, I at once, after giving Flora a mild lecture, left her and looked for a companion in other places and where I could be more sure. So he, he had heard the rumors of polygamy, but he didn't know Flora was part of it but he found out. Of course, one of the problems of polygamy both now and then is illustrated in this situation. Attractive young women who seem to be unattached are actually secret plural, plural wives mm. of much older men. And the Shit. girls, of course, are forced to avoid younger boys their own age. And this is difficult since they, of course, are naturally drawn to each other. Evidently, uh, Flora continued keeping company with this young man. And at one point, Joseph Smith had to take him again to Flora's mother for some education <laughs> on how to stay away from one of his plural wives. I can imagine that um, That's an interesting you know, conversation. conversation. <laughs> William Clayton's journal noted several times that Joseph Smith would ride out in his carriage with Flora by his side. Apparently, Emma began to suspect her husband's relationship with Flora, and she staged a full-blown scene with the Woodworths. Now, we don't know have all the details, but we do have this. President Joseph told me that he had difficulty with Emma yesterday. She rode up to Woodworth with him. He reproved Emma for her evil treatment, and on the return home she abused him much and also when he got home. He had to use harsh measures to put a stop to her abuse, 
but finally succeeded. So she was in a rage about what was going on, what she expected was going on between Joseph Smith, her husband, yeah. and Flora. And, I'd like uh, to have a recording of that discussion. I would too. <laughs> it would make a good show. It appears that Joseph Smith was very attached to Flora, even though she didn't seem to have much tenderness towards him. Joseph Smith was killed in a gunfight in his jail cell on June 27th of 1844, which made Flora a widow at the age of 14 years old. And later the same year, a young man, a non-Mormon, began to spend a lot of time with Flora. His name was Carlos Gove. Helen Mar Kimball disapproved. A marriage seemed likely between Flora and Carlos, and Helen was against it. We quote from <laughs> In Sacred Loneliness. A young man boarding at her father's after the death of Joseph, not a member of the church, had sought her hand. In time won her heart, and in a reckless moment, she was induced to accept his offer, and they eloped to Carthage, accompanied by a young lady friend, and were there married by a justice of the peace. So she married this young man, mm. and um, they the, marrying a Gentile, of course, then as well as now, was very bad for him, and especially it, since she was a widow of the president. Yeah. Later, Phoebe, Flora's mother, was sealed to Joseph Smith for eternity, which left her husband, mm -hmm. Lucian, with no eternal companion, according to Mormonism. It gets very messy, doesn't it? Ooh, it gets so <laughs> messy. I, I, you know, you just wring your hands. You know, I, we quote again from page 393. Um, on January 17, 1846, Phoebe was sealed to Joseph Smith for eternity with Lucian standing proxy, and to Lucian for time. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Brigham Young officiated at the ceremony. This left Lucian without an eternal companion for himself, but on January 19th, he married Charlotte Fox, Aminta Maria Williams, Margaret Johnston, and three days later, Rachel Kingsley. So, wow. I know. So Joseph Smith not only stole the wives of men while he was living here on this planet, he continued to steal them from him in eternity. Now, of course, Jesus made it clear that there is no eternal marriage, but despite what he said, they believe there is. And many married women did believe it and consigned their mortal husband to be without an eternal wife by being sealed to Joseph Smith for eternity. But what it looks like to me that happened, the Phoebe husband went on the rebound uh -huh. uh, and decided, I'm not going to be left alone because he married three plural wives in the same day, just two days yeah. after that. Yeah. And then three days later, married his fourth wife. So anyway, <laughs> he was acting out, I think, after his wife dumped him for Joseph Smith. The Woodworths traveled west with the Mormons, and Flora Ann Woodworth Gove died in Canesville, Utah. She had been well known as Joseph Smith's wife, and, and, but then history lost track of her, and she died in obscurity. Flora Ann Woodworth is just yet another story, a sad story of another life ruined by Joseph Smith and the evils of polygamy. So that's the story of his 19th wife. Yeah. Now, How much trading do you think went on among the, the brethren? Lots. Yeah. It does you, today, you too. You do this, and I'll do that. Yes. And, yeah. Yes, it did lots, of, yeah. uh, and, yeah. and it does today. Yeah. I still hear stories where they will promise their daughter to this person if this will, if happen, this will happen, and, and it, it is. It's very mm. uh, dis <laughs> distressing. <laughs> At least. So now we'll go to his, tw his 22nd wife. And she was Lucy Walker Smith Kimball. Now, this woman, we could have actually done a whole show on her because she has quite an interesting story. If you want to know all the more information than what we tell, obviously you can get the book, In Sacred Loneliness and Nauvoo Polygamy, too, and read about that. But just a couple of months after Joseph Smith took 16-year-old Flora Ann Woodworth for a plural wife, he also married 17-year-old Lucy Walker. And, of course, again, he was more than double her age. Joseph Smith took several wives within just a few months' time, and some of them within just a few days' time, and some he married on the same day. He actually proposed to Lucy Walker when she was only... 15 years old and was living in his home, which is a familiar M.O. on how Joseph Smith tip, picked up several of his plural wives. Lucy Walker was born April 30th of 1826 in Vermont. When she was six years old, her father was baptized a Mormon, and her mother, Lydia, was very upset that he joined the Mormons, but she later gave in and also joined him in Mormonism. In 1838, they packed up and left for Missouri with some other Mormons. 
The mob atmosphere in Missouri, however, was terrified, terrifying, so they left for Quincy, Illinois in April of 1839. They rented a farm in Quincy where her father worked as a carpenter, but later he was called to serve a mission. Joseph Smith and the Walker family became close acquaintances. Of course, Smith always sent the, the man of the home <laughs> to away, the too, so he could have uh, more room to work. In fact, Lucy's older brother, Lauren, became Joseph Smith's personal attendant. Again, he's taking and making the opportunity for him to keep yeah. close watch on these developing young teenagers. They moved to Nauvoo in the spring of 1841, which is when 15-year-old Lucy first met Joseph Smith. That summer, Lucy's mother became very ill, we quote. Lydia and the children contracted the dreaded chills and fever, the endemic malaria of Nauvoo swamps. Lydia was cared for at the Smith home for some time. In the winter, was brought back to her own house, and she lingered for a time, then in January, January realized that she was going to die. And she did die just a few days later which so affected her father, John, that his own health turned bad. Well, Joseph Smith intervened. He separated the children from their father. He took some of them into his home, including <laughs> Lucy. <laughs> we quote. <laughs> the prophet came to the rescue. He said, if you remain here, Brother Walker, you will soon follow your wife. You have just such a family I could love. My house shall be their home. The four eldest shall come to my house and be received and treated as, uh, treated as my own children. So we farmed out the six youngest children to friends, kept the four oldest children with him, and as was a normal procedure by Joseph Smith, he was being deceptive in his actions. Lucy later discovered that her father had been sent east on two two-year missions. But Smith had told her he was sending him away to places where he could improve his health. Putting it mildly, this was extremely upsetting to Lucy when she found out. One of Joseph Smith's sons, Joseph III, said this about Lucy's help in their home. Joseph III reported that Lucy served as one of Emma's maids, working for her board and going to school. She used to marshal us children to and from school, as would an elder sister. So she was used yeah. heavily in their home to serve the Smith family. Well, Joseph Smith had succeeded in separating the children from the father and from each other, so the setting was ready. And at this po point, he proposed to 15-year-old Lucy Walker, <laughs> demanding that she marry him. Todd Compton explains. On page 463 of the book, in her extraordinary autobiography, she wrote, in the year 1842, President Joseph Smith wrote an interview with me and said, I have a message for you. I have been commanded by God to take another wife, and you are the woman. My astonishment knew no bounds. This announcement was indeed a thunderbolt to me. Now, he makes it sound like she's going to be the only one. Of course, he already has, what, 21 wives yeah. by this point. But as usual, Joseph Smith phrased his proposal as a direct commandment from God. He used his authority as a prophet to explain celestial marriage. Now, the Mormons' belief of eternal marriage and eternal families are not biblical teachings. They originated from these kinds of situations where Joseph Smith promised eternal blessings if she would become his plural wife and, and in this life. So he coerced them by promising eternal life and eternal families. Wow. As he had done with other girls, Joseph Smith placed the burden of the salvation of Lucy Walker's family contingent upon her willingness to accept him in a plural marriage relationship. To get Lucy, Joseph Smith had sent her father away. He lied to her where and why he left. Her mother was dead. She was separated from most of her siblings. She had no one to discuss his proposal with. It went like this. Hmm. Sounds like a Book of Mormon it's promise ugly. here. It's so ugly. What have you to say, Smith asked. Nothing, Lucy replied, entirely at a loss. How could I speak or what could I say? When Smith sensed resistance, he said, If you will pray sincerely for light and understanding, you shall receive a testimony of the correctness of this principle. This praying sincerely <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Well, that was a setup at its lowest. Lucy was young, inexperienced, and alone. 
There was certainly a false sense of obligation in this since she was living in Smith's home. He was a self-proclaimed prophet telling her that God commanded this thing and her and her family's eternal life depended upon it. Well, Lucy was horrified by polygamy and she did pray and did not quickly get an answer. This is what she said. She prayed, she wrote, but not with faith. She was nearly suicidal, tempted and tortured beyond endurance until life was not desirable. Oh, that the grave would kindly receive me. Why, why should I be chosen from among thy daughters, father? I am only a child in years and experience, no mother to counsel, no father near to tell me what to do in this trying hour. Oh, let this bitter cup pass. And thus I prayed in the agony of my soul. Isn't that horrible yeah, that, that so he sad. would do this to people? Young lady. And... Mm -hmm, this young girl. Yeah. Joseph Smith knew that Lucy was terribly unhappy about this, and so he spoke to her again and with no mercy. He said that the marriage would have to be secret, but when they got to the Rocky Mountains, he would then acknowledge her as his wife. Sounds like they were planning <laughs> on going to the Rocky Mountains early, doesn't yeah. it? Well, he also said this. To refuse him would bring damnation. It is a command of God to you. Furthermore, there was a time limit. I will give you until tomorrow to decide this matter. If you reject this message, the gate will be closed forever against you. And this was the what worst part threat. of all of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's an threat. ugly threat that Joseph Smith used on Lucy Walker. Like I said, this is one of those stories that, that we could really go into great detail, but, but we brought out the points where, where our viewers could see the kind of deception that Joseph Smith mm -hmm. used. Uh, and, and the setup is so perfect too, because she's alone and she's destitute and she's living in their home and God said to do it. And, your family will be saved if you do. And all of these things are just nothing but a very cruel, cruel deception. And you, and you have to wonder what was going through Joseph Smith's mind on a daily basis and at night and his planning and his... He had to be planning these things. Uh, yeah, his, I mean, this just didn't approach. come off the top. This is a man who's going after a girl in mm -hmm. any way he can do it. And so uses what he can that know. he thinks will coerce her into do it. Well, well, we need to say that God has never said anything remotely resembling this kind of allurement into plural marriage for eternal life or suffer damnation. And certainly not to a young, naive girl who was grieving for her parents and forcing her to accept spiritually legalized adultery. Well, Lucy held her ground, Good you know, she, she held on as long as she could. And she said she could not do this unless God revealed it to her. And he hadn't told her. Well, Smith said she would receive a confirmation and she did. But we know that that confirmation did not come from God. Feelings have nothing to do with determining God's truths. God's word is the only source for discerning spiritual truth from error. But unfortunately, Lucy fell victim to her feelings, which produced an emotional experience which she thought confirmed Joseph Smith's claims. She said her soul was filled with a calm, sweet peace and supreme happiness, and she received a powerful testimony of the truth of celestial plural marriage. So Lucy Walker, on May 1st of 1843, ended up marrying Joseph Smith, and Emma just happened to be away <laughs> shopping in St. Louis. How convenient. <laughs> on that day. Like you said, it makes you wonder what kind of planning Joseph yeah. Smith was going through, yeah. how he worked this around so that everything worked out so well for them. Um, and it was on the day she, uh, the day after she turned 17, 17 years okay. old, and he had proposed to her, to her when she was 15. William Clayton was the officiator, uh, in, and Eliza Parcher was uh, Eliza Partridge was a witness in this plural marriage. Lucy later said there was no romance, romance to this marriage. Yeah, she said this. It was not a love matter, so to speak, at least on my part it was not, but simply the giving up of myself as a sacrifice to establish that grand and glorious principle that God had revealed to the world. A grand and glorious principle. So you can see the, how, they, how they move away from, from being terrified of this thing and how, how ugly it is to them until they just get so brainwashed and conditioned to it uh, that they look at it on a totally different level. Hmm. And I need to add, for the sake of all plural wives who may be watching the show, 
You do not have to sacrifice yourself to plural marriage. Jesus is our only sacrifice that pleases God. There is no other information known about marriage after the ceremony. Um, Lucy wrote that she had been sworn to secrecy about her marriage to Smith and that Emma knew nothing about the marriage. <clears throat> it's interesting that years later, of course, a lot of these stories came out later when affidavits were signed that yeah. Joseph Smith really was the one who started plural marriage. And she was asked if, if she knew of any child that had been fathered by Joseph Smith, and she declined to answer the question. She did. <laughs> yeah, I think that's interesting, too. But she was sure that Emma didn't know about it. Uh-huh. And did it, never even suspected. I mean, he. Oh, I think she suspected a lot. Yeah. But she didn't. And these other girls riding around with him in carriages and mm -hmm. stuff. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. After Joseph Smith was killed, Lucy Walker was married to Heber C. Kimball, oh. <laughs> <laughs> who took several of Joseph Smith's widows. He had a ready made harem when yeah. Joseph Smith was killed. And then she died September 1st, 1910 at 84 years old. She did come to Salt Lake with the rest of the Mormons. So that's the story of Lucy Walker. I just, uh, just a shocking how the, how these young ladies are and how they're coerced and what kind of planning Joseph Smith must have done to, to do this. And you see that now still in mm -hmm. current mm -hmm. yeah. polygamy practice. Yeah. They still use any kind of uh, false obligation, yeah. uh, fear and guilt, um, <laughs> shame, you know, whatever yeah. it takes. Well, I know it affected uh, some of the people I've talked to over the years about uh, when their children turn 13 and 14, even in their Mo even if they're Mormon and they think about this polygamy situation where they might have leaders sitting up on the stand looking at their daughters mm -hmm. and wondering if this was back in the polygamy days that they'd have to mm -hmm. give up that daughter to a leader. And something. who knows, that leader may be choosing her for a plural wife for, for the heavens, you know. Yeah, I mean, exactly. that's happened. I've heard stories where these elders will come to a young girl and say, I want you for my plural wife in heaven. Oh, even? <laughs> yeah, okay. in, the Mormon, in the mainline Mormon the church. Main... I've heard more than one story oh. of that's happened. Well, I've seen some cute girls. That... <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other story. whole other <laughs> story, of course it is. Well, thanks again, Earl, for, yeah. for helping with, uh, with another one of our shows. You know, um, if, if Lucy Walker, and this is what we do on our shows, we want people to check it out, because if Lucy Walker had studied her Bible to determine truth rather than depending upon a mere man and her feelings, she could have discovered that polygamy was never commanded or required by God. Despite Joseph Smith's lies and threats, God will not destroy females for rejecting polygamy. This is a vile and wicked lie coming straight from the pit of hell. Women born in Mormon polygamy have been threatened with the same lie ever since it first came from Joseph Smith's mouth. But Jesus Christ is the truth and he alone is the Savior and he saves us all by himself. He doesn't use polygamy to save us. He did it all on the cross. Believing and accepting that truth into your heart and soul is all you need to do to have eternal life. Polygamy is nothing. Thank you for watching.